morning, church. I want to invite you to stand. We're going to worship Jesus in this place.
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. To every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through. Jesus. 
this morning. If you're comfortable, I want to ask you to lift your hands in this place to glorify Jesus. We glorify your name, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your presence in this room right now. Thank you for your presence in this room right now. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins? Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles?
Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. You are here this morning, and we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you so much for that. We are desperate for you this morning, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you are here, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for what you're doing in this place right now. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, these are cries for you because we love you, Lord Jesus. We want all of you, Lord Jesus. We want you to take over our lives, Lord Jesus. Jesus. The word desperate just keeps coming in. This world is so desperate for Jesus. They don't even know it. They don't even know it. We know it here, though. We are praising you, Jesus. We are desperate for you in our lives, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are filling that, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are here this morning, Lord, and we thank you for that. We thank you for what you're doing in this place, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So there's something I say to my kids a lot besides Jesus loves you, <laughs> and you're awesome, and I love you. And they say to me, I know, Mom, I know already. <laughs> but I really feel like we all need to hear it. Ben, don't roll your eyes. <laughs> I want you to know something. And this is so true. That Satan is a liar. Okay? He is a liar. He is such a liar. He's such a liar. And it's good for us to recognize that. We need to recognize that. We do. He has no power over us unless we give it to him, okay? No power. He's a liar. He is a liar, but that doesn't matter because we have Jesus and he is truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life, okay? And he lives in us. And whatever Satan is trying to tell you, if it does not line up to God's word, it's a lie over your life, okay? It's a lie. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy, and he hates you. I tell my kids he hates you. He doesn't care about those people that aren't following him. He doesn't care. He cares about them. He cares about us. He wants you, and he is lying to you fully and hardly, and he wants you bad. I see what is happening to these kids in this world and parents, and they're being lied to, and these kids are being lied to, and they're listening it because they have no other way. They took Jesus out of school. They took him out. So what's going to fill that? Confusion is going to fill that. The enemy is going to come in and work in confusion. Don't let him confuse you today. Because you are set free. You are bought by the blood of Jesus. And you are set free. All that stuff he's saying to you, he's lying to you. And Jesus set you free. He set you free. He who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus. He is working in you. He is working in us. He's using us. He wants to use us to tear down the walls that the enemy has built. He wants to do that. And Satan hates that. So he's going to come against you even harder and harder. And we need to recognize the lies of the enemy and the truths of Jesus. It's the word of God. It's Jesus in our life. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the truth. The truth will set you free. 
will set you free. Recognize the enemy. Recognize his voice. Ben said this week, I love it, he said, the enemy works using the word I and me. That's what he does it. Maybe I'm this, or maybe I'm that, and maybe God doesn't really, maybe he didn't really choose me. That's the enemy. No, that's not Jesus. The enemy works in that and recognizing it. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the, we have the tools that he has given us in his word to overcome what Satan wants to do in this world. This world is so desperate for Jesus. So desperate. I watched that movie, Jesus Revolution. Where's Lori? And these people back then were so desperate for Jesus. And that is now. It's now. You know, we have woken. I believe that there's a, an awakening and that Jesus is going to do such crazy, awesome things. It's starting here now. It's starting in us. It really is. It really is. And we're going to the pavilion next week. And I mean, just pray over that. We don't want to fill seats to fill a pavilion. We want to see people's lives being changed. Let's get that field filled with chairs. People bring in blankets and chairs just to hear about Jesus. Just to hear that his love is real. His salvation is real. His freedom is real. He does not confuse. He straightens our path. And that's what he wants to do. And Lord Jesus, we just accept that. We rebuke what the devil has for us, Lord Jesus. Right now, just get rid of it. You know, rebuke it. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. Come at him with scripture. Come at him with scripture. He's real, but he doesn't have power over you. He does not. The scriptures are powerful. Thank you, Jesus, for that. So we, Lord Jesus, today, Lord Jesus, just say in your name, Lord, give us a fresh, a fresh anointing of freedom, of truth in our lives, Lord Jesus. Give us truth, the truth about ourselves. Show us what you think about us. And let us use that, Lord Jesus, in our lives. Here this morning, we are desperate for you, and you are feeling that desperation, Lord Jesus. We are crying out to you, and you have answered, and you are here today, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for that. We thank you. Let us, let us carry it into our week. Lord God, I pray over Mother's Day next week. I pray over Mother's Day in the pavilion, Lord Jesus, that that field will be anointed, Lord Jesus, and people will come, and the truth will be told, Lord Jesus, and people's lives will be changed, and we will raise up this generation, not of confused kids, Lord Jesus, but kids that stand firm in who they are in you, Lord Jesus, that we will stand firm in who we are in you. You have chosen us. And we answer that call, Lord Jesus, today. I answer that call, Lord Jesus. I thank you for that call on my life. I thank you for it. Let me use it, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you for this morning. Amen. 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 So awesome, Jesus. So Tuesday nights are still going on. We're still going strong, right, guys? <laughs> so we're starting Acts, right? Acts, Dad? I don't know. I think it was announced. John Davey. Yeah, so we're starting that this Tuesday. Come out. You know, just get into the word. Continue to strengthen yourself in the word. Get that in there. Thank you, Lord. And women, we have uh, the third Saturday of the month is our women's breakfast at the barn. Five in two weeks. So 510, Route 312, come. And just be encouraged and build each other up. Let's sharpen each other and just come together and just strengthen one another. And back there we have our pavilion, the, the model of the pavilion to give your tithes and offerings in. If you're new here today, fill out a card. Let's know who you are. We're not going to be here next week. Woohoo! It's the pavilion. It's going to be so good. God's really, really, I really, like, he's preparing it. We're going to reap that harvest, you know. He's been sowing and sowing, and we're going to be reaping. And we thank you so much for that, Jesus. Thank you. All right, kids, let's go downstairs. Awesome. Welcome, Pastor Ray. This morning, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bell. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I am having a great time this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. My, my, my. Oh, that was glorious worship. 
I really enjoyed that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got news for you. Well, it's not news. It's something we all know. He's here this morning. We welcome your presence, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Wow. How good. It's a great day. <clears throat> I, uh, I watched some of the coronation of the king, not the king of kings, but of the king of England. And uh, anybody watch any of that? I, one person. <coughs> hey, I'll tell you what. <coughs> I, I really want to touch on it this morning as a, uh, a springboard into uh, a word from the Lord. But <coughs> it was incredible. Now, I didn't watch the whole thing. I watched 20 minutes of it. I, I, I watch YouTube videos. I love YouTube. Got to click on it. Okay, I see enough. All right, see enough. Okay. But the fanfare, the pomp and circumstance, the majesty of, oh, <laughs> I mean, the soldiers out there, their hats, the regalia, the whole thing. It was absolutely magnificent. And you could say, well, if you like that kind of thing. You know. No, it was just like, it was amazing for the world to watch, to, for the world to see, setting apart, like to see that this king, he's 74 years old, and I feel like that's very young. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so the uh, amazing, uh, I have, I printed out, uh, this liturgy, <coughs> it's the authorized liturgy for the uh, coronation rite of His Majesty King Charles III. And, uh, and it was commissioned and authorized by the most reverend and right honorable Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Protestant denomination, believe in the Bible, believe all the things Many people will say, hey, this is what we stand for. And, and you can see that there can be people that they're just not living uh, what it says. But we, we have that, we might have that right here with some, you know, uh, or in the church at large. There's, there's something about <clears throat> having an encounter with the Lord, an experience with the Lord that changes our heart. And I think we felt that this morning, amen? amen? This was an awesome time of worship where where you were expressing yourself. I was expressing myself, and it was like the truth will set you free, and you'll be free indeed. Hallelujah. But there's something about the majesty of our God, of Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. There's something about the future that's coming with this majestic king, and yet when we looked at this thing that happened yesterday and saw the majesty of what was going on and, the, the, again, the pomp and circumstance and everything, it was awe-inspiring, but it doesn't compare to what's coming in the future, in our future. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to say about this, the Archbishop of Canterbury, he's Christian. He's a Christian. He knows the Lord. They have the Bible. And there are people in this denomination that truly know Jesus and are praying for God to move powerfully. Amen? And for us, we should be praying for them as well. We should be praying for all other uh, churches for, for an awakening, for a change. And in our own lives, say, Lord, I... I want to break into a greater realm of knowing you, of experiencing you, of honoring you, and, uh, and having the Holy Spirit come in and, and capture our hearts. But listen to some of these things here. <coughs> it won't be long. But So this is the liturgy, and it, uh, it says, and 
the procession of faith leaders and representatives of faith communities that was happening. The pers- uh, and then it goes through a whole bunch of, a bunch of things. And then it says, greeting the king, young person, uh, there's a young person there that came and says, your majesty as children of the kingdom of God. Hey, kids, you're children of the king of kings and lord of lords, and he values your worship and, uh, and, and counts you very close to him. Amen? He's saying that for us to see that. And here's these kids. Uh, <coughs> says, your majesty, as children of the kingdom of God, we welcome you in the name of the king of kings. And then the king responds with this. <coughs> in his name and after his example, I come not to be served but to serve. That's what the king said. Then there was a moment of silent prayer. The Archbishop of of Canterbury brings a greeting and introduction. I want to read it. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and with thy spirit. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is indeed. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, we are gathered to offer worship and praise to Almighty God, to celebrate the life of our nations, to pray for Charles, our King, to recognize and to give thanks for his life of service to to this nation, to the realms, and to the commonwealth, and to witness with joy his crowning and anointing as he set apart uh, as he is set apart and consecrated for the service of his people. Let us dedicate ourselves alike in body, mind, and spirit to be a re, a, a, to a renewed faith, a joyful hope, and a commitment to serve one another in love. Isn't that awesome? This is spoken out over the king, and he's there. And then they did the Kyrie eleison, and, uh, uh, and then it was the recognition. The Archbishop of Canterbury says, I here present unto you, King Charles, your your undoubted king, uh, (coughs) where... (coughs) Oh, that was in Spanish, so... uh, uh, (coughs) Wherefore, all you (coughs) who are come this day to do your homage and service... Are you willing to do the same? And then everybody went, God save King Charles. And then there was this other uh, person here that presented something else, and everybody responded, uh, God save King Charles. And then uh, there's another guy here, uh, Christopher Finney, a GC, the chair of the Victoria Cross and, uh, and George Cross Association. I here present unto you, King Charles, your undoubted king, Wherefore, all you who are come this day to do homage uh, and service, are you willing to do the same? And all said, God save the king. And it goes on. I just like, I like this, this whole sense of honor. Amen? Uh, and, and the fact that these were Christians, is everybody there a Christian? Hey, no, is everybody here a Christian? We, we hope. You know, but we're all at a different place of wanting to say, I want to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. Can I get a witness here? And to to see these words that are, they're godly words. There were things that were spoken, and there were people there that were having a witness in their heart that uh, God saved the king. We want to see the power of the Holy Spirit come. Imagine King Charles gets baptized in the Holy Spirit and gets shaken up. I mean, because there's a sense in which he's a figurehead, he has responsibilities, but it's, you know, a complicated, big form of government and everything. But imagine that voice being filled with the Holy Spirit and beginning to speak, uh, speak out about Jesus, because all the words are there. He's got the King James Version of the Bible. He's got... All of the tools, and so uh, <clears throat> this morning I'm just thinking about this subject of glory and honor. 
you know. We're here to, and, and we did. I loved our worship this morning. I, I think that's the most exuberant worship we've experienced in quite a while. Can I get a witness? And it was not forced. It was, it was just like, we're here. We lift up our hands. We're here to worship you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory and honor is, is something very important to the Lord. He's given us great scriptures here in Ephesians chapter uh, 6, verses 2 and 3. It says, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. You kids want to live long life on the earth? Honor your father and mother. There you go. Amen. Uh, in Leviticus 19, rise in the presence of the aged, show respect for the elderly, and revere your God. I am the Lord. That's, that's in the NIV. I'm going to read it now uh, in the ESV, Leviticus 19, 32. You shall stand up before the gray head <laughs> and honor the face of an old man. And you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. First Chronicles 29. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Isn't that great? First Chronicles 29.11. First Timothy 117 says, Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh, we sang that song a lot. I love that. Honor and glory forever. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Revelation chapter 5. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and on the sea, and all that is in them singing, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. This is honor. This is going on in heaven. This is going on in our hearts and minds as we come into the presence of God and saying, I want you to, I want to be filled with your spirit, Lord. We've talked about this recent vintage that Jesus said this, the same Holy Spirit that is in me is in you. The Holy Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity, is in Christ, is in the Father, is, and he's, He's the Holy Spirit of God. We had a great men's uh, meeting yesterday, Jonathan leading that, and had uh, brought a, a teaching by uh, John Bevere. And it was very powerful in this whole sense of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> that the Holy Spirit uh, doesn't force himself upon us, but as we open our hearts to him, he, he opens himself to us. It's up to us. It's up to us to say, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, you know, some, uh, <clears throat> I think it was said uh, that, uh, you know, I just don't hear from God. Does he hear from you? Yeah. Amen? Do you start the conversation? Do you engage with the Holy Spirit? Do you engage with the Lord. I mean, the Holy Spirit, like, and it says, it seemed good to us, this is what it says in the book of Acts, it seemed good to us and the Holy Spirit. They were speaking for him because they, they're in relationship with the Holy Spirit. It seemed good to us and the Holy Spirit to send out Silas and whatever was there, but that's for us to engage the Spirit of God. And what's he looking for us to do? He's looking to be honored He's looking for Jesus to be glorified. The Holy Spirit never singles himself out like, hey, I want some attention here. No. It's always pointed toward the Lord Jesus Christ, to him who sits on the throne. It's 
Jesus is to be glorified uh, and honored. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We, we come to the Lord and we open our hearts to him and say, come, fill me, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So this whole sense of, <clears throat> of glory and honor, uh, the pomp and circumstance that I was talking about, which was really on, in earthly terms, it was good. It'd be good for you to flip on just to look at it and see, this is it's incredible. The, you know, Westminster Abbey and the thousands of people that were there, and, and, uh, and it was incredible. But there's coming a day for us that's a whole different story. Amen? Uh, <clears throat> you can turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 21. John having a vision as he's on the Isle of Patmos and experiences the Lord and uh, that whole book of Revelation that can, it's filled with wonder and awe and, and some things that we just scratch our head and don't understand. <laughs> and, but there's, there's things, but it's all culminating in the wedding feast of the Lamb. It's all cul culminating in God bringing glory and honor to himself with the people that he's chosen that have decided to say, I want to follow Jesus. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. So that's this earth that we're on. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Is he going to blow this up and it's not going to be here? I don't know. It could be just a refurbishing, you know. But whatever it is, it's a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first, first earth had passed away. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I love that. The new Jerusalem. Listen, Jerusalem is a very significant place in world history. Can I get a witness here? And um, one that we want to stand with. Do they know Jesus? Most don't. Most don't. I mean, they have a heritage that they don't even really acknowledge, so many of them. But there's coming a day when they're going to acknowledge it. Amen? Amen. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. How cool is that? And I heard a loud voice uh, <clears throat> from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for the words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. It's my child. Amen. Hallelujah. This, these are the words of Jesus. These are the words that are true and faithful. This is not some speculation and, well, I hope this works. No, this is God's word. Can I get a witness here? Amen. He says, <clears throat> then it gets touchy. But the, now, this is kind of odd. Listen to the people that are exceptions to what was just said. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, their place will be in the fiery, fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Isn't it funny that 
I, I mean, I've shared it before because it stuck out at me. The cowardly. You wouldn't think, like, why the cowardly? Because God has called us to be bold and uh, honoring of him, not fearful to do what he's called us to do. Amen? Amen. Not shrinking back, not like, well, I, I don't want to look stupid. I, I don't, I don't want to say something. I, I don't know that much here. And, and backing off, and God is saying, hey, I've given you my spirit. I, I'm your strength. I'm your portion. I'm, I'm there for you. Everything was created by him and for him. This is stuff we've gone over many times, and I feel like we have to rehearse it time and time again. We were created by him and for him. He is the image of, of the eternal God. Jesus Christ is the full representation of the Godhead in bodily form. You want to know what the Father's like? Jesus. You look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, and he says, and everybody who believes in me becomes like me. We receive his spirit, and he changes us into a new creation, and that same Holy Spirit, I'm repeating myself, but it's worth it, that same Holy Spirit in Christ is now in us. Have you received Jesus? If you have, the Holy Spirit dwells within you. It's the same Spirit of Christ. And you can't run away from Him. He's always there. He doesn't, He doesn't, He says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. He's telling us, I want you to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. I want you to, to grow in a greater depth of knowing me. And the way you do that is with communication with Almighty God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by what? The word. the word of God. As we read the word, that's why it says, Paul writes, study to show yourself approved. He's telling Timothy this. As a workman, doesn't need to be ashamed, who correctly handles the word of truth. When you read it, it comes in, it starts becoming part of who you are. Scriptures come to your mind. You fall into a temptation, scripture comes to your mind, say, wow. That was quick. How does it happen? Because we, we make a habit of reading the Word, studying the Word, uh, meditating on it, and it becomes part of who we are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I think I read this, I'll read it again. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, no, I don't think I did read that. Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God it shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as silver. It had a great high wall with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east and three on the north, three on the south and three on the west. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12, 12 apostles of the Lamb. How cool is that? John was one of those 12. He's getting a fresh revelation. Now, it wasn't easy for John. I mean, many of them were, uh, you know, martyred and stuff. John was not martyred. He was boiled in oil. I don't know what I'd rather have, you know, but he says, the angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates and its walls. The city was laid out like a square as long as it was wide. It measured, uh, he measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length and as wide and high as it is long. He measured its wall and it was 144 cubits thick by man's measurement, which the angel was using. 
The wall was made of jasper and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the city were walls decorated with every kind of precious stone. And then it goes into the foundation and gives all of these precious gems and things like that. The 12 gates were pure gold like transparent glass. Verse 22 says, and I'm getting close to the end of this. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Cool, amen? The city does not need the sun or moon to shine on it for the glory of God gives it light and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On that day, no one, uh, on that day will its gates, I'm sorry, on no day will its gates ever be shut for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does, does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Powerful, amen? There's a destiny. We are called to be the bride of Christ, adorned for Jesus. There's going to come a so I say, well, is this all figurative language? Hey, it's Jesus is a real person. Jesus is a man. He's created us in his image. We're drawn into him, and, and he's given us things and given us his word so that we can follow, follow after it. And I'm going to ask those that distribute communion to, to distribute it now. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Jesus did this, a celebration of communion. He did it for us to remember him, a, a simple little thing, you know, eating the bread and the wine uh, and, and saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. And it was something, he says, as often as you do this, do it in, in memory of me. We want to bring honor and glory to the Lord. It's not, and so today, with <laughs> on the heels of a coronation of an earthly king, we have the description of a coronation of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We have descriptions here of of what's coming. This is not symbolic language. There's coming a new heavens and a new earth. And who knows how soon that will be. Hallelujah. As you're passing them out, he says, <clears throat> the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. He wants us to always be mindful of what he's done. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Amen. For whenever you eat this uh, bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. That's what we're making a proclamation, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. His blood was shed. Our sins have been forgiven. And uh, we're a new creation in him. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. He's a God of honor. He wants us to honor him. Amen. He wants us to, to be mindful of him so that as we do this, it's not getting weird or anything like that, but just pausing. Isn't it something how quickly we can, just in a moment, there's times when I get, I'm reminded that I really haven't spent any time with the Lord. It just pops into my head. How about you? 
you know. It's just like, and then in, in, a, in a second, it can be, oh, Lord, I just want to be with you. I want to I wanna experience your presence. I want to thank you. Sorry I've been so preoccupied, but I'm here. I want you. Amen? Drawing into that, and I believe it's music to his ears. Hallelujah. He said, for anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord, eats and drinks judgment on himself. That's why so many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. Is there healing in communion? Is there a participation in the body and blood of the Lord that comes in and, and strengthens us and changes us? Seems to be. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, but if we judged ourselves, we would not come under judgment. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that, he will, uh, so that we will not be condemned with the, with the world. When we get disciplined, it's a good thing. Amen. Have you ever been disciplined by the Lord? You, you know, where you just you get that check inside and it's like, I don't like the way I feel. And he says, yeah, well, I'm glad you don't like it. I want you to experience me. So then, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for each other, and it goes on. But let's, let's honor him this morning, amen, in, in celebrating Holy Communion. Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread and, uh, and he broke it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, Lord, we just join together and we're taking this bread, mindful of what you've done for us, and we pray for a fresh awareness, even through this service and through what you're doing in us. We just pray right now that you're going to come and pour out your spirit. We receive your body in Jesus' name. He took the cup. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. We're remembering that by his stripes we have been healed. He was wounded for our transgressions. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we come to you this morning, Lord, and we thank you for your shed blood. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made. And we pray that you'd come and pour out your spirit upon us. Lord, we want to be changed and transformed by the renewing of our minds. And so as we partake of this, these emblems, as we partake of this blood, we thank you for the forgiveness of sins and pray to just be filled to overflowing in Jesus' name. Let's partake together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord, almighty God. Let's have the worship team come back up and Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Your name is healing. Your name is that. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadow, burn like the fire. We'll sing it again. Sing it Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. We 
Holy Spirit, as we exalt you in this place, Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, as we fix our eyes on you this morning, Lord God, and honor you. I thank you for a, an overflow of your mercy in this place, God. An 
overflow of your healing in this place, God. An overflow of your spirit, a fresh fire, a fresh anointing. Lord God, as we turn from sin, as we turn from anything that's not of you, thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you and we understand, Lord, that there is a great and glorious day coming, Lord God. But until then, Jesus, we have a job and it starts with running into your arms and it starts with surrender. And I thank you that as we surrender, you lead. Lord, and as, as we surrender, your power meets us there, Lord God. So we run into your arms in a fresh way this morning. And we receive what you have for us today, Lord Jesus. We, re we receive a fresh infilling. We receive a fresh baptism of your Holy Spirit. To be your light in this world. So we give you all the praise and thanks. And we're going to keep doing this, Lord, until you return. We're going to keep doing this, Lord, until that great and glorious day, Lord Jesus. And we thank you that the kingdom of heaven is now and not yet. Now and not yet. So I declare that now of the kingdom of heaven in this, in this room right now. We declare healing. We declare freedom. We declare broken strongholds, broken chains. We declare the blood of Jesus over our families. Over those who are lost, Jesus, I thank you that your heart is for the lost. That you are a saving, rescuing God that breaks through the darkness. So we're declaring salvation over our families. We plead the blood of Jesus over our households, over our families over our workplaces, over our friends. We thank you, Jesus. Declare healing in this place right now. Paid for by the blood of Jesus. We speak healing over Fred. Fred, in Jesus' name, be healed complete healing strength fill your body right now as you're probably praying for us right now Phil be healed in Jesus name in Jesus name healing is yours Victoria be healed in Jesus name Victoria healing is yours paid for, it's bought, it's a complete work, it's a finished work. Isn't this present so good, church? So good, right? Come on, give him a shout. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the altar in this room. If you want to pray for specifically for a family member, if you need prayer for yourself, if you need to receive salvation this morning, uh, there's going to be a few of us from the prayer team to meet you up here and pray with you this morning. We're going to keep the, this, uh, this vibe going. Um, but the rest of you, as usual, let's hang out together. Um, let's fellowship together. In Jesus' name, can the church say amen? Amen. amen. God bless you, church.